Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Before we get started, I just wanted to say thank you for all the nice comments and, and helpful feedback that I've received throughout this series. It's been quite fun. I really do appreciate it. I've enjoyed working on this series quite a bit, so thank you very much for that. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Straight Sword class in Dark Souls 2. This weapon class is absolutely huge, so I may not say that much about the weapons that are quite low on this list, mainly because there are better weapons that serve pretty much exactly the same purpose. That is a thing that will happen most of the time when a weapon class is very big. However, let's start off with the first weapon, which is the broken straight sword. This weapon is not very good at all. It has low durability, doesn't do a lot of damage. It has no counter damage, but there are a couple of interesting things that you can do with the broken straight sword. Because it doesn't have any counter damage, you can use it as a test weapon. You can, for example, infuse four of these with the four elements and test it to figure out the weaknesses of certain enemies. For some reason, this weapon has a thing where it doesn't consume barely any stamina when you attack with it. It weighs two units, which is the same as the short sword, but it consumes less stamina than the dagger that only weighs half a unit. I have no idea why this weapon is like this. I believe it's the only one in the game. One theory though is that since you can find two of these weapons very early on in the Forest of Fallen Giants and the stats to wield are very low, Maybe they intended for you to try this weapon out in power stance, so you can get to grips with that. But yeah, overall, no one expects a lot from the broken straight sword. Up next, I have put the foot soldier sword. This thing is gotten also in the forest of fallen giants by the enemies that wield it. The moveset of it is one of the better ones, especially when you one-handed. It has the short sword moveset with two thrusting attacks as the strong attacks. And this weapon has 25 poise, which is above average for straight sword type weapons. It has very low durability, however, so it's not going to be very good at carrying you through a level and it can be really annoying to farm. Moving on to the next one, I've put the Ivory Straight Sword. You get this for defeating Ava the King's pet and trading the boss soul to Ornifex. The reason I put this so low on the list though is because this weapon has very short reach and it has an incredibly high dex requirement at 40, but it has no scaling and you cannot infuse it with raw either only weighs half a unit and it has a special attack that admittedly does do a lot of damage but it's very difficult to land and the animation to perform this attack takes a little bit of time to come out overall the stats are too high you get it really late in the game you have to defeat a boss for it which means it upgrades with petrified dragon bones it's not really that great so yeah let's move on to the short sword this thing is also gotten in the Force Fallen Giant. a lot of the early straight swords are gotten there this weapon like I mentioned before has the same moveset when you one-handed as the foot soldier sword it is a little bit shorter though but it has a lot more durability it gets 120 counter damage which can be paired with the leo ring and uh yeah overall not too bad if you begin the game with a character that doesn't have a good weapon such as the warrior for example you can use this thing until you pick up something better but yeah these these early weapons are not that great you're, you're very likely to switch them out once you find something better so the next weapon is a little bit strange it's the red rust sword this is one of the weapons that Vengarl uses, and this weapon pretty much has the entire moveset of an axe. It weighs 8 units, 80 durability, and it has no counter damage. It also has 30 poise, which is the typical axe poise break. However, it's not very good. It's too heavy and doesn't do a lot of damage, even for the weapons in this class. It gets an S scaling in strength. The thing about it is that because it behaves like an axe, you probably are better off just using an axe. They do get counter damage and they weigh significantly less than this thing does. So next is the Drake Keeper Sword. This one is another one that is just like, why would you use this weapon over a lot of the other ones that exist in this list? You get this by the Drake Keeper that wields it in the Dragon Eerie, and it can be quite a pain to farm. The majority of the Drake Keeper weapons are very bad actually, except for the hammer. It's a little sad because those weapons are quite difficult to obtain. But yeah, this thing has no counter damage, 25 poise, weighs 6 units, and 90 durability. So the durability is pretty good. The moveset is that of the broadsword, but unfortunately if you happen to land a counter attack with the broadsword, you will do more damage than with this weapon. However, it does have better reach. Next up is the Ashen Warrior Sword. You can get this in the fire DLC by the enemies that wield the weapon. It weighs 3 units, does not have a lot of durability at only 30 and 25 poise, which is above average for straight swords. It has bleed on it, but unfortunately because it has so low durability, I can't really see this weapon being very effective to bleed things. When you bleed enemies, you kind of have to be very aggressive and hit them multiple times, which you can't really do with this weapon before it breaks. So yeah, this one and the next one that I'm going to talk about, the possessed armor sword, just don't seem to be very good at all. 
The only special thing that they have is that they have 25 poise break, but besides that, they're not too good. The Possessed Armor Sword does fire damage. You obtain it in a fire DLC. One thing that's good with the Possessed Armor Sword is that it has thrusting attacks. They tend to be really good because they can be paired with the Leo Ring. But yeah, that's really about it. Here we go, the Black Dragon Sword. I have mine infused with Raw because it's a weapon that gets no scaling. This sword doesn't necessarily have anything bad with it. Like I would say some of the other ones that I've previously mentioned, it's not particularly heavy. It doesn't have a terrible move set. This weapon kind of has two cons with it. That is that it's kind of hard to obtain as well as it upgrades with a rare upgrade material. But yeah, even though you get this quite late in the game, it doesn't really perform better than some of the other weapons that you can get much earlier than it. That, that, is, that happens to be the case with a lot of these straight swords, unfortunately. You can find it in the Dragon Eerie by the Dragon Knights that wield it. The problem with farming those enemies is that they tend to come at you all at once and they are really difficult to kill when you have to fight like 15 of them at the same time. So our next weapon is the Varangian Sword. You can find it in No Man's Worth by the Varangians that are using it. This weapon does medium to high damage for the straight sword category, but it only has 40 durability, which is below average. Again, nothing too special. It has the broadsword moveset, but it has more reach than the broadsword. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what to say about these straight swords. They are, for the most part, very, very similar. So yeah, there's no real reason to use any of the ones that are kind of low on the list. And the same thing kind of goes for the next weapon the broadsword. This thing has less stats to wield than the Varangian sword. You can kind of get it a little bit earlier and it weighs a little bit less as well. So it can kind of get away with doing less damage. However, what I like about this weapon is that you can find one in the second DLC that is already upgraded to plus seven. Also, the broadsword does do more damage than the longsword because it gets a B in strength, but the moveset I would say is a little bit worse and also it has less reach. So the Hate Knight sword, you can get this by the Hate Knights in Hate Star of Flame. And the moveset of it is one that I don't think any of the weapons up until this point have had. This thing does lightning damage, 4 units of weight, 70 durability, 20 poise break, 110 counter damage. You can use this sword if you are a faith build for example. But yeah, it's not too bad. It's a little bit rare to find however in Scholar of the First Sin. It used to be a lot easier back in Dark Souls 2. But in this version of the game the Hate Knights do not have a high chance of dropping this weapon. Anyways, the next one is another elemental damaging weapon, being the Fume Sword. You can get this from the Soul of the Fume Knight by taking it to Ornifex. It weighs 3 units, has only 40 durability, 25 poise break, which is pretty good for a 3 unit weapon, 120 counter damage, and its moveset does include thrusting attacks. When you one handed it has the same moveset as the Short Sword, which means you can thrust twice. This weapon also has one of the longest reach out of the Straight Sword category, if not the longest and it does dark damage. I do very much like the design of this weapon. It kind of looks like a Morgul blade from Lord of the Rings, the weapons that the Nazgul's use. It's one of the coolest looking straight swords in the game. All right, here we go, the blue flame. You can get this in the Undead Crypt by the enemies that use it. It is. It can either be a really good weapon or a really bad weapon, depending on how you use it. It's basically a weapon that you're supposed to use if you have high intelligence. And the cool thing about it is that you can cast spells with it and it has counter damage, which means that your spells also get counter damage. It only weighs three units. And if you are a sorcerer, I don't really see any reason not to use this weapon. All you really need to do is have the stats to wield it at 13 strength and 15 dexterity. And then all of the points that you put into intelligence after that will only benefit this. You can use your staff in your left hand and uh, the blue flame in your right hand because it's always better to use weapons in your right hand and staffs in your left. That way you can do backstabs and critical attacks as well as your right hand does slightly more damage than your left. Staffs and chimes are not affected by what hand they're wielded in. Anyways, this thing is amazing for a sorcerer. You should totally have it if you are one. Like I said, there's no drawbacks unless you absolutely do not want to raise your strength and dex to get it. But you do find it quite late in the game, which, which means you most likely have the stats to invest into strength and dex to be able to wield this thing. Sometimes enemies come all the way up close to you even when you're casting spells. So you can use this uh, as a defensive weapon and then use your staff for long range. So next up is another pretty interesting and unique weapon in this category, the Puzzling Stone Sword. This thing weighs only two units, has 60 durability and 25 poise break, as well as 120 counter damage. And the moveset can be really good paired with the Leo Ring because when you two-hand it and you do the light attacks, you actually do two thrusting attacks, which are probably the fastest and the easiest to hit attack for any weapon. Also, the stats to wield are very low at 7 strength and 6 dexterity, and it has an S scaling in dexterity. 
I just think it's really cool that this thing only weighs two units and has 25 poise break, which is above average for straight swords. Also, when you do any of the strong attacks, whether you wield it in one hand or two, it performs a whipping attack. This has significantly more reach and you can use it in the DLC to activate some of the levers. If you started off with the sorcerer class, for example, that doesn't have very high strength and dex, and you want to use something a little bit better than the dagger, this thing can certainly be it, because it's one of the lowest requirements for a weapon that you can use, but the weapon is not completely useless like the broken straight sword. So yeah, this thing gets a lot of points for that. Now, I believe that the blue flame is probably better than this if you are a sorcerer, but you know, that's only if you are a sorcerer. If you're not a sorcerer, then this thing is, uh, is better. But yeah, let's go to the next three weapons, which are actually very strong, mainly due to the fact that they're so light and they do so much damage and they have a very good moveset, all of them. Coming in at number three, I've put the Yellow Quartz Longsword. This is a weapon you don't really see very often. You get it from Chancellor Welliger and it only weighs two units, has 30 durability, 20 poise and 120 counter damage. This thing shares the moveset of the Longsword, obviously but it has a slightly worse moveset in my opinion. However, for a two unit weapon to do as much damage as it does is quite incredible. It doesn't have any thrusting attacks, so it cannot be paired very well with the Leo Ring, and that's probably why the Longsword is more used in PvP, but certain attacks on this weapon will actually do more damage than the Longsword, even though the Longsword has more overall damage. Anyways, the number two weapon is another crazy strong straight sword, that being the Sun Sword. You get this thing after you get 20 Sunlight Medals and you take them to the Sunlight Altar. Another way is to farm the Falconer enemies and they have a small chance of dropping Sunlight Medals. It only weighs 3 units, has 60 durability, 20 poise, 110 counter damage, and the moveset is kind of a combination of the broadsword and the short sword. So you do get the poking attacks with one hand when you do the strong attack. And you also have a running poking attack, which is really, really good to pair with the Leo Ring. This thing gets an AA scaling, and at high strength and dex levels, pretty much most of your damage comes from your scaling. So yeah, the Sun Sword is extremely good. It's kind of an upgraded version of the Short Sword and the Broad Sword. It kind of takes both weapons and makes them better, essentially, because it has more reach than both of them and more damage. However, this may be a weapon that it takes you a while to obtain. Unlike the number one, which you probably guessed it by now, is the longsword. This thing is hands down one of the best things in PvP because the moveset of the longsword pretty much has absolutely no attack that is bad. Every single attack you can do, backstep, rolling, they're all extremely good. Many of its attacks are thrusting attacks, which again, can be paired with the Leo Ring. You can do a combo with this weapon. This works really well in PvE where you, you two-hand it and you do a running attack and then you follow that up with a strong attack. Now, the strong attack of this weapon when you two-hand it is a thrust, which means that you can do two quick thrusting attacks and that is completely devastating when you pair that with the Leo Ring. Against bosses, for example, it can be extremely strong. And you get this weapon at Macduff, which is kind of crazy. There are four weapons that Macduff sells and they happen to be top three weapons in all of their classes. That being the mace, the rapier, the longsword, and the battle axe. Somebody needs to nerf Macduff, I'm just saying. But yeah, let's talk about some of the weaknesses, I guess, of these weapons, even though there are quite few. In PvE, though, in particular, there are some enemies that you may struggle to stagger if you don't wear the stone ring. That goes for pretty much all the longswords. That's why I often mention the poise break of these weapons and how that can be pretty important. But yeah, that's pretty much all I can think about. This thing doesn't consume a lot of stamina either. It attacks extremely quickly, which makes it easy for you to roll away. It can be buffed and infused, and the moveset makes it very noob-friendly. You do find this weapon in the Forest of Fallen Giants, in an iron chest. It is a fire version of this weapon, but unless you're planning to be a Hexor or a Pyromancer, it would be probably better to just buy one from Lenigrass and use a physical weapon instead. But yeah, if you play with these long swords, you will not be disappointed, especially this one. I would say that the ones that are kind of worth looking at are the long sword, the puzzling stone sword, and the blue flame, particularly in your first playthrough. It's a little bit much because the long sword is quite dominating in its class. It just it does everything in PvP and in PvE pretty much. And it also doesn't weigh very much, so you can easily use it as a backup weapon if you want to. Anyways, that was it for now. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.